The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Pharisees and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered round Jesus, and they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the Jews in general follow the tradition of the elders and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes ask him, Why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, It was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of Scripture. This people honours me only with lip service, while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandment of God to cling to human traditions. He called the people to him again and said, Listen to me, all of you, and understand. Nothing that goes into a man from outside can make him unclean. It is the things that come out of a man that make him unclean, for it is from within, from man's heart, that evil intentions emerge, fornication, theft, murder, adultery, avarice, malice, deceit, indecency, envy, slander, pride, folly. All these evil things come from within and make a man unclean. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, today's Gospel presents us with something that is quite challenging, a challenging encounter between Jesus and the religious leaders of his time. On the surface, it seems like a debate about ritual hand washing. You wash your hand like this, you sanitize your hand like that or not. But Jesus is addressing something that is more profound. That is the nature of true holiness. And what is it that really separates us from God? The Pharisees and the scribes, they approach Jesus because they are scandalized that, Jesus, that the disciples are eating with unclean hands. So the ritual washings, uh, they wash the hands like this, they have to purify until like that, is an elaborate system of purity laws that had developed over the centuries. In the beginning, the law was prescribed for the priests before they offered the sacrifices. And so they had to do this to purify themselves. But the oral tradition of the elders extended the practice to all the Jews to every meal. So every meal, right, for them became a religious act. It's an expression of their Jewish identity. So on the one level, you have to admire the devotion behind the practices. Because these guys are devoted, you know. They are a people who want to live every moment of their life in accordance with God's will. And they want to do it in a way that is not only internal but external as well. But Jesus sees a danger. He sees the risk of mistaking, of reducing these external observances for true holiness. So what is true, what is holy has been reduced to only the external. And Jesus responds by quoting the prophet Isaiah, the people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far away from me. Because it's possible, dear friends, to go through all the motions of religion. You can say all the right prayers, you perform all the right rituals, and yet the heart is far from God. Very far from God. And you can see this in our society, in our days, in so many cultures where they observe all the little things about their religion. But where is their heart? How can they do all these things, the corruption? How can they do all these things to ruin the country, to kill the innocent? And they observe all the precepts of their law. This is what Jesus is warning them about. 
And then Jesus makes another more radical statement. He says, nothing that enters a person from outside, it doesn't matter what you eat, can defile the person, but the things that come out from within him. That is what causes a person to be unclean. And in, with these simple words, Jesus overturns centuries, hundreds of years of Jewish ritual law. He is declaring that true holiness, true purity of heart, is not about external observances. It's what's inside, what's in your heart. What is in your heart that you are doing all these things? Why are you doing all these things? I tell you, friends, this teaching would have been so shocking, you know, to the audience of his days. As you can imagine, if you have some friends in some cultures who are so obsessed with observing external purity laws, this can, this one cannot, this one can haram, this halal, and you are telling them, eh, none of it makes any difference. It's a shock. The distinction between clean and unclean is a fundamental distinction in the Jewish identity. But Jesus is saying none of these things, none of these things can separate you truly from God. But what separates you from God is what comes from within. And he gives you the list of sins. And you have all this list of sins there, evil, unchastity, theft, murder. You know, we Catholics, uh, we get a bad rap because, you know, we have lists. You blame Jesus lah. He gave us a list. He gave us a list here of all the deadly sins of envy, of pride. Because there are sins that are deadly and mortal and these sins separate you from God. These are what truly defile a person and it comes from within. And then you might be tempted to have a relief, you know. This is great, lah. then I do not need to worry about external rules anymore. I don't need to worry about all the rituals. I do what I want. Then you miss the point. What Jesus is describing, this purity of heart, is far, far more demanding than any external observance. It's very easy to wash your hands before you eat. It's very easy to purify yourselves in a certain way. But it's so hard eh, to purify your hearts from envy, from greed, to purify your heart from arrogance. The devil has no body, you know. You think the devil got body, yeah? But his sin was the greatest sin because it was the sin of pride. It's a spiritual sin. It's so easy to avoid certain foods, you know. This don't eat, you that don't eat, and it's fine. But it's so hard eh, to control your tongue, to avoid the deceit that flows so easily, the malice that comes in our speech. What is the bad word? The bad word is a word that you say, right, with the intention eh, to hurt somebody. That is a bad word. Because it comes from the heart and it has an evil intention in it. So Jesus is calling us to this radical transformation of your inner selves. He's calling you to align your heart with the heart of God. To love what God loves. To hate what God hates. And it is a work, right, that is a lifetime of work. It is not something you can accomplish on your own. Impossible. Impossible. This also to show you this. It requires the grace of God working in us through the power of the Holy Spirit. And this teaching for us Christians is so profound because your faith is not only, it is, you have external observances, but not only that, but the inner transformation. The external perf performances are guides, valuable aids, helps in your spiritual life, but they must reflect and must flow from what is in your heart. You come to Mass, you receive the sacraments, you say your prayers, are good things, important things. But if your heart are not reflect, it doesn't reflect the state of your heart, right, that is truly turned to God, what's the point? You don't benefit from it. Are your observances merely external, without engaging your heart? You, you fast only to wait for the fast to be over so that you can go and indulge? Or you fast so that later on you can go and do evil deeds? That's what the Pharisees were doing. That's what Jesus is warning you about. So God is challenging you, me, all of us, to examine our motivations. Why is it that we are doing the things that we do? Out of genuine love for God? Out of genuine love for neighbor? Out of habit? A desire to appear righteous before others? 
a sense of obligation? Why is it that you are doing the things that you are doing? And Jesus is reminding you again that holiness is not about withdrawing from the world, about avoiding the contamination of those people who are unclean, this unclean, that unclean cannot see. What are you afraid of? It is about cultivating a heart that is pure, that can engage the world, that can be in the world, but not be corrupted by the world. It's about developing a strong inner spiritual life with God that you can move through the world and not get contaminated by them because these people so haram, they touch you, you so become haram. No, the power of Jesus makes the unclean clean. That's the power of Jesus. That is what we are called to do. And it's also to look at how we look at other people. It's if true defilement comes from within, then you cannot only judge other people based on their external actions. You cannot assume that those people uh, who are not practicing this and that are somehow less pure, less loved by God, who love God less. But we call to look at the heart, the heart that God sees. So the path of inner purity is very hard, I tell you, dear friends. It requires a constant vigilance. A willingness to confront the darkness and the evil that is within our own heart. The humility to acknowledge our failings and our need for God's grace. Because if you check your heart, eh, you will realize how far you have fallen from God. And that's why God gives us the sacrament of confession. Because those sins kill and confession restores grace. God saves you through the death, His death of the cross. But that death of Jesus is applied to you. His blood flows and removes sin from you in the sacrament of confession. And if you do not go for confession with sin in your heart, you remain a slave to the devil. And you walk around, right, with this sword hanging on your head because if you die in that state, what will happen to your soul? Only when your hearts are pure, only when your hearts are reliant with God, you will experience the peace, the fulfillment that you were created for. But it's a challenge. So as we prepare to receive the Eucharist today, we ask the Lord to purify our hearts. We ask the Lord that He will root out from within us all that defiles us and fill us with His love, His compassion, His purity. For it is only the pure of heart that can see God, both in this life and the life to come. So we ask this grace from Our Lady, she who is pure of heart, who sees God now face to face to intercede for us as we make this difficult journey through life.